led by the Central Florida Regional Planning Council. The joint land use study for the Avon Park Air Force Range brought together partners to identify the challenges and opportunities of being the home to the largest military training facility east of the Mississippi. But our real starting place was recognizing that planning was something that was very important to the range, the potential future for its mission, and also to our communities that surround it. But well, we then began to realize we really needed to have a more in-depth study, and that's when we first became fully aware of the joint land use study process and began to work with the Department of Defense and the Office of Economic Adjustment to, to look at uh, what are the opportunities. So to achieve the cooperation between the civilian community and the military community, we sat around the table and we talked. And they understood then why we need this training facility and what it provided in terms of national security for the United States. The goals of the study included coordination between the comprehensive plans of Polk, Osceola, Highlands, and Okeechobee counties, and the cities of Avon Park, Frostproof, Sebring, and the range's comprehensive plans. Protection of health, safety, and welfare of residents living or working near the Avon Park Air Force Range. Preservation of long-term land use compatibility between the range and the surrounding communities. One of the things that really happened once we actually started the joint land use study was we put together two important groups. One of those was our technical advisory committee, which really was made up of planners and natural resource people uh, and other administrative people from not only local governments, but from the various branches of the military that use the range, and also from agencies like the Water Management District and the Department of Transportation. So we really formed a strong technical and an administrative bond as we looked at this project together. The other really important thing is we had a policy board that guided us, and that policy board was made up of elected officials from our local governments who really some of them met for the first time as we came together on this project, which was really something that, that brought a lot of synergy to the project, a lot of different perspectives to look at what was important to the range, and very importantly, what was important to the community. We also had environmental partners at that, which we felt was very important because the range has such a unique location uh, related to its uh, natural resources and the important environmental uh, aspects of the range. And since that's a priority both of, of the range and a priority of the communities at large, uh, we really did bring those people into as well. But that policy board that brought it came together at the initial joint land use study uh, initiation really was with us throughout the project and has continued to meet as we've been moving through implementation, which is really one of the most important things that came out of this was this great coordination, communication of partners that had not all worked together before. In total, 28 meetings were held, including eight public workshops, four policy committee meetings, four workgroup meetings, and 12 presentations to public and civic organizations. As the partners came together, compatibility challenges were identified with respect to encroachment around the range. Those challenges pertain to environmental issues, noise impacts, land use, communications, and intergovernmental coordination. The recommendations of the study included land development regulations, including zoning for structure, object height, and lighting, establishment of conservation buffers, and easement acquisition from willing landowners, sound attenuation techniques, real estate disclosures, coordination of local plans. The city of Frostbrook actually amended our land development regulations and our comprehensive plan to encompass those issues that we talked about under the J-List. Brochures and an informational website were also developed to educate citizens about military operations in high noise areas. The study was designed to protect public health, safety, and welfare while safeguarding the training activities of the military. And I think what the J-List did was enable the range to learn about how county government works, how our community operates and the people think. And it gave the county, it gave me as a county commissioner at the time, the ability to appreciate 
all that the range does. To view the joint land use study for the Avon Park Air Force Range, or learn about the partners and process of developing the study and its recommendations, please visit avonparkjlos.org.